Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to our PSP Storytime reading. Today, we are going to be reading The Incredible Present by Harriet Castor. This, and we're getting into the kind of chapter books now, so they might be more fun. So, chapter one, Lily. Lily Mack lived in a tall old house with her parents and her granny, but most of the time it was just Lily and granny. Lily's parents weren't like other parents. They always had some crazy project underway. Their latest plan was to follow in the footsteps of the explorer Monty Thrips. 100 years ago, he had set off for the South Pacific in his balloon. Mr. and Mrs. Mack had read about him in an old book. Then they had bought a balloon, packed their things, and set off. We'll be back for your birthday, they said. It was Lily's birthday tomorrow, and there was no sign of Mr. and Mrs. Mack. Lily missed them a lot. Granny was, kinda, was kind and funny, if a little forgetful. She and Lily had everything. She and Lily did everything together, but it just wasn't the same. Lily decided to stop thinking about her parents and think about her birthday presents instead. Her friend Freddie had a toy garage for his birthday. Lily enjoyed playing with it, but she didn't want a garage. What about a giraffe? That would be an amazing present. Granny could knit a scarf to keep it warm but it might miss home. A sky-gazing, star-seeking, shiny black telescope would be fun. She could go outside and look for Mars. I wonder if I'll, if I'll get a telescope, Lily said. Granny put down her knitting and smiled. Wait until tomorrow, she said. Chapter 2. A Present Hunt. At last, it was Lily's birthday. It was Bert, Lily's birthday morning. She threw back her covers and jumped out of bed. Everything went flying as she threw on her clothes. Time for presents. Lily's friends had their presents at the breakfast table, not Lily. Each year, Granny put them in a different place. Where would they be this year? Lily raced downstairs. A balloon was tied to the banister. Lily saw a note attached, a clue to her presents. She read it. Happy birthday, Lily. Follow the arrow to find your presents. Where was the first arrow? Lily looked down and spotted it right away. The trail took her all over the tall old house. She saw spiders on the stairway and beetles in the bathroom, but she couldn't see any presents. She looked under the beds and behind the books. She still couldn't find any presents. All over the house. At last, she reached the sitting room. There sat Granny, knitting what would probably become the longest scarf in the world. Happy birthday, Lily. Are you looking for something? And there in the corner of the sitting room sat my presents. Lily looked at her presents. What could be inside those three boxes? Lily squished them and she squeezed them. She stood them in a row and then she piled them high. And finally, she read the labels on each present to see who they were from. Lily tore off the paper of the present with a blue bow, but it wasn't a sky-gazing star seeking shiny black telescope. Oh, well, I suppose it was nice of Auntie Alice to remember my birthday. 1001 1, Boring Facts to Learn book. And she still had two presents left. Lily opened the present with the green bow. But it wasn't a giraffe. It was a basket of really smelly soap. Thanks, Granny, said Lily. Lily sighed. She only had one present left. Slowly, she unwrapped the present with a yellow bow. A box of writing paper. Very useful, said Granny. Yeah, said Lily. Then she saw one last present. From her parents. Chapter 3. The Last Present. Lily looked at the brown parcel and wondered what was inside. Her and parents always found incredible presents. Maybe it would be a dinosaur tooth. Or perhaps a rainbow hamster. Or even an ice cream plant with chocolate, strawberry, and vanilla flowers. 
Lily held her breath. Slowly, very slowly, she opened her last present. Inside was a small bag with a label on it. The anything bag. Ask for anything you want, reach inside, and there it will be. Anything? Anything at all? Lily didn't know what to ask for first. Perhaps she should start with something small. I'd like some crayons, please. Lily reached into the bag, and sure enough, there was a box of six crayons. Lily found some paper and sat down to try with the crayons, but she soon discovered something very strange about them. When she had finished her pictures, Lily wrote a list of everything she wanted to ask the bag. She forgot all about the telescope. Who'd ask for a telescope when they could have anything? The list took her almost until lunchtime. Then Lily noticed a second label on the bag. P.S. You could only ask for six things. Oh, Skittle! If she could only ask for six things, she had just five choices left. She looked at her list and wondered what to choose. Chapter 4. Three Wishes At the top of the list was a bed-making robot. Lily hated making her bed every morning. Lily made her wish and reached into the bag. A bed-making robot, please, bag. But the robot didn't do exactly what Lily had in mind. When I said make a bed, I didn't mean actually make a bed. Lily tried again. Next on the list was a space buggy. She could explore places no one else had ever seen. Lily made her wish and reached into the bag. With a flash and a bang, there in front of her stood... Oh no, cried Lily. She had a space buggy, no doubt about it, but not exactly the space buggy she had in mind. So Lily made another wish for some magic of her own. I'd like a witch's kit with real spells in it, please. But the bag didn't hear her properly. Instead of a witch's kit with real spells in it, Lily got a witch's cat with real smells in it. It was hard to say who looked more surprised. Things were not working out very well. Just then, Granny called, Lily, lunchtime. Lily wrinkled her nose. You stay here, cat. I'll bring you some food. As she went downstairs, she wondered what Granny had cooked for her birthday lunch. Chapter 5, The Chocolate Wish. It is spinach you like, isn't it, Lily? Spinach? Why had Granny cooked spinach for her birthday lunch? Blah. Lily didn't really mind spinach, but it wasn't birthday food. Birthday food should be special. Quickly, she picked up the bag and wished for a zapper that turns all your greens into chocolate ice cream. In a shower of stars, Lily pulled the zapper out of her bag. Lily pointed its enormous hand at her plate of soggy green spinach and zapped. It worked, but not just on the spinach. Every single green thing had become chocolate ice cream. Lily, do something, cried Granny. Ugh, help. Chapter 6, Help. Lily didn't know what to do. If only her parents were home. Then she thought of her bag. Of course, she could ask the bag to get them. She held it up. Please bring them home, bag, as quickly as you can. They arrived in a flash and still dressed up like explorers. Lily began to tell them what happened. She told them about the robot that made beds. She told them about the space buggy. She was telling them about the smelly cat when he walked by. Pooh, said her dad, we must sort things out. We'd better put that bag into reverse. He turned the bag inside out. Then Mrs. Max said a funny sentence. For you asked Lily everything back, take please bag, dear. Lily held her breath. Everyone waited to see what would happen next. In a second, the grass was green again, and not only the grass. Lily couldn't smell the cat anymore. The robot in his beds had gone, and she couldn't hear any alien baby squawking. Things were back to normal. Well, almost. Chapter 7, starting again. Sorry about that, Dad said to Lily. The bag was our first invention. We've decided to be inventors from now on. Lily let out a sigh. Does that mean you're home to stay? She asked. Yes, said her mother. 
Lily felt that was the best birthday present she could ever have. They had a huge picnic to celebrate with no spinach in sight. You'd never have guessed from looking at the picnic party what a strange birthday it had been. But Granny was never quite so fond of her green hat after that. It always made her ears a little bit sticky. And that's the end. Join us on Thursday for more.